glad you reminded me, Dan, because do you know I would forget? <clears throat> and I actually want to because I want to go through the different screens this morning. We will be kind of going back and forth between my monitors this morning. How many of you in the room actually have more than one monitor? Yeah, that's what I have is six, George. <laughs> I was wondering if I could show multiple monitors. Nope. I could show all six, but... Yeah, what I'll do is switch between the two this morning. Um, just as a reminder, my latest article is in Stocks and Commodities September issue. If you have a subscription, you can actually log in and download the article just by going to the binary options and click download. Um, if you don't, you might want to pick up a copy of it. I'll work on doing that, Dan. <laughs> okay, we do have an 8.30 report this morning. It's the unemployment claims. So if we have any gamblers out there, you could go into Nadex and actually... Uh, decide whether you think it's going to be above a certain number or below a certain number and trade that. And um, if anybody does that, all you do is go into the events and, for example, the jobless claims. Uh, let me get it up. Um, you can decide whether you think it's going to be greater than or less than and go in and trade that. You can see right now that everybody thinks it's going to be above uh, 290,000. Um, if it comes in below and you actually sold this number, then you could actually collect the full premium of 100. <laughs> see, now you have a reason to gamble. <laughs> And to me, you know, I just, that's too much like gambling for me. There's no technical analysis for that. <clears throat> At least not in my methodology, okay? All right. So that's the highlight of today. <laughs> we can now gamble. <laughs> okay, let's move my email. All right. Does everybody see my screens? Um, the first thing I want to do, actually, though, is show you the scanner. If I can figure out which screen that is. There we go. Can everybody see my scanner window now? Okay, so over here I have, you know, like the future contracts for gold, crude, the NASDAQ, the Dow, the S&P 500, the DAX, and the Russell. Now I have two meters uh, on the currencies. I have a 45 and a 1440. And um, if I was a longer term trader, for example, let's say that I wanted to be longer term until, you know, the end of the week or tomorrow at 3 p.m., whatever it was, then I would look at the 1440. And you can see that the dollar was actually overbought on the 1440. And, of course, now it's coming down. You can also see that the euro, the Swiss franc, and the New Zealand were uh, right to the point of being oversold. And, of course, the British pound is heading that way now. Okay? So it just gives you two different views of the currency futures. Okay? Now... <clears throat> Before we go on to the scanners, because I can overwhelm you with the scanners this morning, okay? We're going to go through the currency meter, because each one of these is a different currency. We have the Canadian, we have the New Zealand, we have the dollar, we have the Aussie, we have the Swiss franc, we have the euro, we have the yen, and we have the British pound. Now, if you're trying to trade the euro US dollar spot forex symbol, then you would want to see the euro strong and you would want to see the dollar weak, which is exactly what happened this morning. You see that the dollar started going up and, I mean, the dollar started coming down, the euro started going up. That's exactly what you would want to happen. 
I would like it to be a little bit stronger. In other words, uh, the euro was a little lazy this morning. It didn't feel like getting out of bed. Okay. The Swiss franc was actually the stronger currency this morning. Uh, you see a definitive rise on the Swiss franc, whereas with the euro, it was a little bit lazy. Okay. Um, let's say that you wanted to go short on the euro, okay, and you're trading the euro Japanese yen. You would want the euro to be coming down while the, euro, uh, the Japanese yen was going up. Does everybody understand that? So basically, if you're trading the spot forex pair, the one that is first in the symbol, if you want to go long, then you want that to be gaining strength. If you want to go short, you want it to be weak, okay? And then on the second pair, you would want that one to be strong if you were going short on the first symbol, okay? If you were going long on the first symbol, then you would want the second symbol to be weak, okay? Now, if you're trading the currency futures intraday, okay, they are all measured against the dollar, okay? So in that case, you would always want the dollar to be doing the opposite of the direction that you're going in. So if you're going long on the dollar, I mean uh, long on the euro, the dollar needs to be weak. If you're going short on the euro, the dollar needs to be strong, okay? And I like to explain that because, you know, uh, a lot of times people get confused over the symbols and which direction they need to be in. Cool. Okay, let's go to the scanner window, okay? I'm monitoring multiple symbols on multiple time frames. So you can see for each one of my symbols in both of my scanner windows, I'm monitoring a 3, a 12, and a 45 minute. Now this is something that we do not have for NinjaTrader, okay? We only have some of these tools uh, actually for TradeStation and multi-charts. So the first column, and I'll drag it out for you, is called Volume Divergence. This is Volume Divergence in a trend. In other words, if we're making a market top or a market bottom, this is where your divergence will come in. You can see right now on the Russell, you have short divergence, and now the magenta peak is coming in. That's typical behavior. Normally, you do get divergence before a um, magenta peak comes in, okay? So this tells me when the trend direction may be changing. Of course, will it change? Well, it depends on the response by the buyers or sellers, depending on whether the market is moving up or down. In this example, they're going to come back to the ATR and they're going to test for sellers. If sellers are there, okay, then yes, the market would go down on a three-minute chart, but sellers need to step into the market. The next column is the ADX, and this is the ADX line value. Now, anything that is above 50 is considered a strong trend, and on your chart, the histogram bar underneath the ADX line will be magenta. If it is above 70, then it would be considered either overbought or oversold. Now, if it's at 70 and it's blue, that means it's overbought. If it is 70 and the sale is red, that means it is oversold, okay? We then have the ADX peak column, and that tells us when we're getting a magenta peak. Anytime we get a magenta peak, then we are expecting a retracement back to the ATR. And I'll show you the ATR in a few minutes on the chart. You can also see it in the scanner window where it says ticks to ATR. So in this case, on the Russell, we've had a magenta peak, and you're now five ticks away from the ATR. Okay, next to that, we have the THD potential entry indicator. The trend indicator has both an ATR and a congestion dot. 
So right now on crude, you're getting a short entry potential. So you know to go over and check that market. Now I know not to do that because you've got blue trend here and you've got blue trend here. What does that mean? That means that the ATR is below price on both the 12 minute and the 45 minute. I would not want to go against that without a magenta peak here. Okay, we were talking about crude, right? And we're at the ATR, okay, so you're thinking about going short, all right? Do you see how you're going against your 12 minute and you're also going against your 45 minute? That is absolutely not the best way to go. Do you all understand that? Because you're fighting both of your higher time frames here. All right, we have some questions on the ADX. Let's go back to the ADX. All right. A lot of you are asking the difference between dark and bright. Okay, it's actually very simple. It will be a bright color, okay, if it is above 20 and it is increasing, okay? But if it is above 20 and decreasing, it will be dark. So this dark red, even without the magenta peak color, or text here, I know this has made a magenta peak. Now do you understand? So right now you can see we're getting a lot of entries uh, right at the congestion area. In other words, either you are at an ATR or you are at a congestion dot. Does everybody understand that? How do I know that? because they're all listed right here. You have long, 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 short. No, it tells you there's a magenta peak there, Bonnie, because it's dark. Magenta peak can come any time after 50. That's what turns the histogram bar magenta. What do you mean, Jim, after a magenta peak, what are the numbers? Oh, okay. We're rating the slope. Now, I don't really use that number, but I can tell you this. The best magenta peak right now is the one on the 12 minute, Russell, because it has a rating of 12.5. Does that necessarily mean it's going to have a stronger pullback? I've seen no correlation of that. Yes, it's a steeper slope, but does that necessarily mean, oh man, that's going to pull back, you know, whatever amount of ticks it is right now, it's only 10 ticks. No, I haven't seen that correlation there. Now, the correlation I have seen, and this is one of your questions from yesterday, Jim, is if you see a magenta peak that is flat, means, and flat means it's not a pointed top, then typically it will go back and it will test either that low or that high. Okay? Does that answer everybody's questions on the ADX? Okay. So um, now you can see most of the potential entries are, are gone. That means that price is no longer at the ATR. Price is no longer at the congestion dot, okay? Then we have a THD divergence indicator, which actually monitors the volume as it's approaching an ATR. It does not monitor the volume on an approach to the congestion dot, only to the ATR. And as you can see right now, there's no potential divergence there. If we had divergence at an ATR, it would come up and it would tell us either a long or short divergence. If it comes in and it says short divergence, for example, that tells me that the buyers are decreasing as price is making new highs. What would I anticipate? I would anticipate a test for sellers. 
Does everybody understand that? Okay. The next indicator is the trend ATR and we have the previous bar trend which is the previous bars trend. We have the current bar trend which is the bar that is forming right now. What color is the trend on it? We have how many ticks from the ATR it is. So you can see right now gold is 75 ticks away from the ATR. And we also have a congestion notification. And this tells us any market that is in congestion. Okay? And you can see right now that the Russell is actually in congestion and you've had a magenta peak over on the 12 minute chart. Now this is still here but somewhere in the background there was a magenta peak and you're now 12 ticks away from the ATR. Okay? So it gives you a lot of information at one time and you can set email alerts, you can set audio alerts and you can set little message windows that will pop up at you when any of these things occur. Okay? Over on the currencies, we have exactly the same setup. We can tell exactly how far we are from any of the ATRs as well as any potential entries, any, for example, the New Zealand 12 minute. Do you see how that is at 76.99? That tells me that market is overbought and you have divergence on the highs. So you're going to get a magenta peak on the New Zealand 12 minute chart probably real shortly. Does everybody understand how I saw that? Now, what would I do with that information? That's a good question, isn't it? Well, number one, this tells me that it's going to be retracing back to the ATR, okay? There's only 17 ticks to the ATR. It's not worth my effort. Could you trade a binary if they had it available in the New Zealand? Yes, but they don't offer the New Zealand. Nadex doesn't anyway. Any questions on that? All right, let's go to my other screen now. Okay, and this is the actual, all of the time frames that I monitor are on this screen. I do the 1440, the 720, the 180, the 45, the 12, and the 3. Predominantly, I'm trading the 3 minute chart, okay? Now, what do I want to see on the higher time frames? Number one, the ADX. Is it overbought or is it oversold? Uh, and how far is it from this ATR? That is very, very important to me because the ATR acts as support or resistance. Okay. So in this case, we have an ATR up here, and it's right about 99.11. So you would come over to your 12-minute and put that value on the 12-minute chart. I'm not going to do it this morning because we're going to be changing charts a lot. Okay? Now, on the 720-minute, we also have an ATR at 98.48. On the 180, we have an ATR at 97.70, and we have a congestion dot here at 97.56. What does that tell you about crude? It tells you it has a lot of overhead resistance. Does that mean it will not go through those areas? No, it does not. But it means there, there's got to be a lot of buyers coming into this market to overcome not one, not two, but four levels of resistance. Typically, that will occur on a wide bar like this. They will absolutely blow through it. Okay, uh, looking at the charts, it does not look like they're going to do it right now. Does everybody understand that? 
I would not, you know, just looking at my charts right now, I would not be going long yet. You know, I, I would wait. If it's tomorrow, it's tomorrow, but I wouldn't be trading into all these areas of resistance. All right, let's look at gold. Now, gold, you're still at the ATR over here on the 1440. It's, it's been trying to break it, but it hasn't succeeded yet. You are uh, above the ATR over here on the 720. You have nothing overhead on the 180. You are not oversold on any of these markets. The only thing that you have is a potential magenta peak, but it looks flat to me. Okay? So to me, that tells me more than likely it will go back and test the high, which is at 1320.6. Uh, it's about five points off of that right now. What do you have that will stop gold today? You have an ATR over here on the 45-minute chart. You also have a congestion dot over here on the 12-minute. Those are the two areas I would be most concerned about today. Does everybody understand that about gold? And it's moving off of the unemployment rate. I want to see what the unemployment rate came in at. It came in at 304, which is a lot less than they anticipated. They anticipated 316. And as you can see, gold is going up off of it. Yeah, you're right. I was looking at something else. I'm sorry. I clicked in the wrong thing, evidently. Yeah, you're right. It's 311, Bonnie. So it actually came in higher than anticipated. And I guess that's good news from the way gold's acting. Uh, let's go look at the NASDAQ. Okay, on the NASDAQ, the only thing that you have on the 1440 that's worth notating is this congestion dot at 4007. You also have congestion dots at 39.49 over on the 720. There's nothing in the way on the 180, and there's nothing in the way on the 45 minute. As long as um, you do not, Let's see how to word this. As long as it breaks this congestion dot. The next logical place for it to go to will be the congestion dot here at 4,007. Okay? I think it's going to bounce down off of this, though. There is a uh, high potential for it to bounce down back down to this ATR at 3,886. Okay? So I would definitely wait on this one. If I did anything, um, you could do a binary option at 3949.5. I'm trying to see what they have available right now on the dailies. I don't see any good binaries at the moment not even out of the money. Now if you wanted to, no, you wouldn't want to do that either because you've got ATRs here below price and you've got an ATR here. Thirty-nine twenty-six. You could do 3932 if you think the 720 minute is going to dominate today you would have to go out on a daily guys because it's the 720 minute and you're expecting it to come back here to 3885 as it stands right now I think that will pull up to 3900 so you could do like 3932 presuming that it's going to go down. Now, the risk on that is about $29. So if you believe that this is, in fact, going to go down, then you would sell the 3932 area. Does everybody understand that? 
and that closes at 415 today. And that's really not based on the lower time frames, that's based on the higher time frame. This is a simulator, y'all know I don't trade uh, my live account. Let's see, yeah, there. It goes back to 70, so you've got $30 of risk, $70 of profit, you place your order, and that's it, okay? And that's because you believe that this one is going to dominate, okay? So you're not trading these lower time frames here. You know, would you watch it when it approaches uh, 39.39? Yeah. If it breaks that one, would you watch it on the approach to 39.27? Yes. Remember, if you get out of it before 4 o'clock, let's say that the market does move down and it moves down to 39.40, okay? That's about seven points there is a probability that you could actually be in the money when it does that and you could exit your position. You just have to watch it and monitor it. And these are what we consider out of the money positions, okay? In other words, you're not in the money right now. But it gives you a lower risk opportunity. That's a higher time frame. Higher time frames normally dominate, Jim. And that's going to give you approximately, if you held it until expiration, and if it did close beneath 39.32, in other words, if it, cl well, actually if it closes at 39.32, um, then you would collect the full premium, which is $100, so... Basically, you did a trade that gave you one to three risk to reward ratio. Actually, a little bit better, but this one at 39.32, Keith. Now, remember I said you could also look at one um, right here at the congestion dot, which was 39.42. But if you notice, all of those have a higher risk on them, okay? That's the reason I said I don't like the risk on those because uh, you're starting here at 39.44. It's 58. There's 52. Um, 45, if it goes up to 52. 39.56, if it goes up, there's 39. The only one would be 39.60. But that's got to move almost 15 points. Do y'all see that? And with it being a congestion dot and you're not seeing a lot of volume on that, I don't think it will do it. Do y'all understand that now? All right, let's go look at the Dow. The Dow, again, you're right at the ATR over on the 1440. You're also at the congestion dot on the 720. Um, my bet would be down today. That's my bet. I'd be down today. Now, does that mean I will just take anything that comes along? Nope. I'm very selective. You're at 16615 right now. This is your 50-50 area here. And on this one, you would have to get down to 570. Well, I don't like that, you know. Um, this one would have about $40 of risk on it. You would still get um, just about a 1 to 2 risk to reward ratio. On this one, I would probably go out and say, okay, do they have a spread available because I don't like what I'm seeing on the binaries. So now I'm going to go over and I'm going to look at the spreads and say, okay, is this number close to any of these levels? Okay, this is the closest one, but again, it's, you know, on this one, you've got a potential of going down to 350. You're going to have about 45, I think, in risk. Yeah. So if I think this is going to bounce down today, 
this is the one that I would do. Because look at your risk to reward ratio. It's 45 to 255. Now that's probably misleading because unless we have a huge day, that's not going to happen. Because that is a 300 point spread and the Dow doesn't move 300 points in a day. Do y'all understand that? So I'm just going to click that and we'll see what that one does while we're in the trading room this morning. And let's just say it moves down, you know, 40 points or it moves down to this ATR, okay? Or it moves down to this ATR, okay? You would capture that movement from your entry to that price because that one's already in the money. Does everybody understand in the money? You're already below the ceiling, and that's what we did. We sold the ceiling, okay, and we're already within the ceiling in the floor. So we're already in the money on the binary. Now, what else could you do on that one? Well, you could actually wait for the retracement that's coming on the three minute because do you see how the ADX is at 70? And if I'll bring this over real quick, okay? This is at 71 and you're getting long divergence. What does that mean? It means you're going to get a magenta peak real quick here. So would that give you a better price? Yes, it would. No, we did the 16650, Jim. It tells you right here, 16650. You're already in the money on that one. Okay, what about the S&P 500? Okay, um, we're at the ATR over here. It's almost identical, guys. At the ATR here, we're what? 51, 55. We're about four points away from this congestion dot. Um, more than likely, I would think that we would get a magenta peak on the 180. It's going to push it back to this ATR. Okay, it's going to have to flip this ATR. You're already seeing the sellers coming in at this congestion dot. So again, you could do exactly the same thing. You know, um, US 500, oops, wrong one. US 500, go out to the daily. Why am I choosing the daily, guys? Because these are coming in from a higher time frame. We're at 1943 right now. They've got one at 1950. This is the one you would sell. $80 of risk, 320 profit potential. Remember, okay, that profit potential is only if it moves this full 40 points, and it typically does not, okay? And I want to make sure that everybody understands that. Don't go get excited and buy a new Mercedes because you think it's going to move the full width of that spread. These are daily spreads. They're very, very wide. Okay. Could it happen? Yes, it could. I mean, they're expecting a 20% correction on the S&P 500. That's 389 points. Okay. That spread is 40 points. So could it? Yes, it could. But realistically will it know all right everybody understand the S&P 500 <clears throat> and again this is based on the higher time frame saying that, that there is downward movement expected okay you know, if you're at resistance on the daily and you're at resistance on the half day, you know, you've got a potential for a magenta peak to come in here. Yeah, I would say the probabilities are higher that it would go down than up. Now, could this ATR here support it? Of course it could. 
let's go look at the DAX, one of my favorite. And you can see that we've had a wide bar up and it has now retraced the wide bar here at the ATR here, at the ATR here, had a wide bar over here. Now the difference is there's no magenta here telling me this is going to go down. Do y'all see that? No, it doesn't, Chris. Now, on the Dow and on the S&P 500, we were magenta here, okay? So we could have anticipated that we would get that magenta peak, and it will push price down to the ATR. We don't have that scenario on the DAX, okay? In fact, we've had wide bars up on the DAX, and it's completed the retracement. And as it stands right now, we are getting divergence on the 45 minute and it's seller's divergence. Now, this bar is not going to end until 930 and that's, you know, almost, uh, what, another 45 minutes almost, actually about 40 minutes. Okay, so this could build a lot, but as it stands right now, as this is pulling back to the ATR, you're doing it on what? Diverging volume. Okay, I wouldn't be real ambitious about entering a spread on that. I would wait, let the U.S. market open, and then decide whether I wanted to go long or short. Okay, the Russell, you're at the ATR here. You are not yet up here to this congestion dot, okay? You have an ATR that is supporting price below the 180 minute chart. You also have an ATR that is supporting price on the 45 minute as it stands right now. Now, this is one thing to consider is that the Russell is not a 24 hour market. Okay? All of the other markets are 24 hours. The Russell is not. And if you don't see it any other way, just look over here. Okay, there's no volume between here. There, There is on the others, but not on the Russell. It tells you it's not a 24-hour market. Don't even try it. Let the market open. Um, Dave, those steep spreads will almost trade like a future. Yeah, they will. Like the NASDAQ 3850, 3950 allows you to short the NASDAQ with a $10 stop out. And you get all day for it to go up. The binary at 3932 has a bigger payout but also will cost money if we don't get below 39.32 by the close. That's right. Either one allows you to play the spread with a $10 risk per contract, but much lower payout. The binary, a bigger payout if we get below 39.32. Yeah, and see, when you have these, and this is the thing that a lot of people don't understand. When you have these big, big days, these big trending days. Uh, most of you that have been in the room a lot know that we can tell ahead of time this is probably going to be a good day for trading because the higher time frames are dictating, okay? And those are the days if you can catch it right at a ceiling or right at a floor with a minimal risk, it, it just doesn't get any better than that. You know, I just finished uh, another article that's going to be published somewhere I don't even know at this point. Um, but I compared uh, three different markets. It was the DAX, it was gold, and the Russell. And it was using the spreads and, you know, return on your investment. In every scenario, the spreads will give you a better return on your investment. And I'm talking, you know, the scenarios I looked at is simple trading methodology. You enter at the open and exit at the close or the expiration of the binary, or not binary, but spread. Every one of the spreads did double what the future contract did. When you allocate what you have to take as margin. Do you all understand what I'm talking about? Or am I just rambling here again? On one of them, on one of the articles, that's what I did, Dave. But in this particular article, I just said, okay, if you trade one contract on the Russell, 
then this is your margin requirement and this is what you would have made. This is your return on your investment. And then on the spread, we said, okay, this is your, your investment. This is what you would have made. This is the cost. Yeah, they're way better. It, both in terms um, of return on your investment, Jim, and in the fact that you don't have to panic. And I'm going to tell you something. I've been trading for 15 years. And when you're trading something as volatile as gold or crude or anything like that, you know, then it's going to mess with your head <laughs> when you get stopped out. Well, I thought about doing, you know, how much you should risk. But if you're trading a future contract and you're trading a market report, you know, your risk is really unlimited because they can trade right through your stop. I've seen them do it. I've been on the receiving end of that one. Well, you could also do that, Dave. You know, let's say everybody knows I'm willing to risk 10 ticks on just about any of the markets I trade. Okay, so typically that's about 100 bucks, except for the DAX. The DAX is a little bit more. Well, it's a lot more. Actually, it's $33.60 more. Um, but let's say we're willing to risk $100. If you take that same $100 and invest it in the spreads or even invest it in the binaries out of the money with the indicators that we have, I get, uh, well, I can't say I guarantee you because I, that's not legal, but probabilities are you will have a higher return on your investment trading spreads or binaries than you would on the futures. And I guarantee you, you will not be freaked out. There I go with that word again. I can't say that word. I do not guarantee anything. <laughs> Probabilities are you will not be freaked out. Sorry about that, guys. I have to edit that one out. Though. And it, it really is amazing because I've done these studies on Forex. I've done them on the futures. I've done it across the board. And across the board, if you are looking at return on investment or you're looking at risk to reward, the spreads really do come out better. That's right, Dave. And especially for a new trader that needs to focus on charts, okay, you know, uh, a lot of times what will cost you big money in the futures will cost you minimal money over in the binaries. You know, and let me see. Give me a second. Let me find the article. And I'll show you the difference. Yeah, this is a, a new one, Chris. Thanks for giving me that one, though. All right. On this one, this is just with the, the DAX. And I'm not going to go into the setup or anything like that. We're just looking at return on investment. Okay? So if you entered the DAX spread, okay, you had $36 of risk. All right? Now, if you exited with profit, it was $56, okay? Now, the return on that investment on the spread side was 156%. On the future side, it was actually 75%, okay? Now, what I want you to realize, and this is what most traders don't realize, is if you're trading the DAX in the future side, your margin on that to intraday trade is $2,500. And all of that money is at risk. Okay? Every penny of it, I don't care how you look at it, it is at risk. Okay? On the Nadex side, the only thing you're risking is $36 on that one contract. How many of you are going to lose sleep even if you miss something and you were wrong? 
you meant to enter long and you went short. Beginning traders do this, okay? Are you going to lose sleep because it costs you $36? I would hope not. Yeah, your wife would. <laughs> I mean, that's not even the cost of a good purse, okay? Tell your wife, it's not even the cost of a good purse. <laughs> or a good purse. But when you compare $36 to a $2,500 loss, it, it, there's no comparison there. Not in my book anyway. And what does that translate to? That translates to, oh, I can focus on my trade. <laughs> sure, why not? My mom laughs at me because she's all into purses and shoes and all that good stuff. And I'm just sort of like, whatever I put on my feet's good, as long as it's go walk. Do y'all understand what I'm talking about now? Do you see it now? Because what happens is, you become so obsessed over the dome that you can't focus on your chart as a trader which is where your focus really needs to be okay you can actually put nadex off to the side and focus on your chart and say okay this is what my volume is doing this is what the indicators are telling me i'm not freaking out here i did that in another article george where i took the actual margin I think I did it on the DAX. <laughs> yeah, you're not dealing with any unknowns, and I really do love that. And it, to me, if you're trading Nadex, you're trading with a mo more logical process. You know, you're thinking about, okay, if I enter this, this is what it's going to cost me, okay? On entry, this is how much I'm risking. When you enter the future, if I was to click right now and enter the Russell in a simulator, okay, how many of you would actually think, oh, that could be a $200 loss there. No, you're thinking, oh, it's going to be $5 commission. And if this goes down to 1137.7, that's $200 profit. Nadex actually makes you register the, the risk first, then potential profit. Oh, if you think you can get crushed in the Russell, try the DAX or gold or crude. I mean, crude's a bear, too. You know, a lot of people actually have to start out on the NASDAQ or the Dow just because it's, you know, limited to $5 a point uh, on the Dow and $20 on the NASDAQ which is better than the ES at 50. But it's the only way you can get trading experience. And over here, you know, you're trading a three-minute chart. Okay, we could actually trade the 720 and the 1440 and still not have that much risk. On the future side, that's what most people will start with because of the lower point value. You know, you have to have chart time. You have to be live in the market. You know, a simulator is great for teaching you how to use the platform, to teach you order entry, and to teach you all that good stuff. 
but if you really want to trade, you're going to have to be in the live edge of the market because that's where the emotional points come in. That's where the adrenaline comes in. You know, I don't get an adrenaline rush when I enter on Nadex. Uh, there's no adrenaline rush there because I know I'm not exposing my full account. On the futures, you do get an adrenaline rush because you are exposing your entire account. You know, uh, most new traders, you know, they really come into trade, uh, trading with the expectation that winning percentages should be sort of like grades when you were in high school or college. Okay? So, you know, to be a B, you need to make 80 to 90 percent. Uh, to be an average trader, you need to make... Set, um, Yes, 70 to 80 percent. Now, if you're a failing trader, you're going to be doing like 60 to 70 percent. It don't work that way, guys. If you did it based on grades, you're probably going to be a failing trader all your life. Because there's a lot of traders that will not trade over 55 to 60 percent accuracy. The NASDAQ and the Dow do move 24 hours a day, the NASDAQ being the better of the two, Bonnie. Um, I've got articles on my website, Bonnie, that goes through all of the market movements. Now, the markets have slowed down, but actually um, the leaders are still the leaders, just less points per day because we've had slower markets. Does that answer your question, Bonnie? Now, on the DAX. This is moving back to this ATR. There's still no entry in it, though. Let's see what the Dow is doing. The Dow's coming back to this ATR. You see right now there's not really a lot of volume on that retracement. That could change at the market opening, but you're right at the point of also making a magenta peak here. In fact, if that comes down uh, to about 594, you're going to get a magenta peak on the Dow. 180. On the NASDAQ? Sure. On the NASDAQ, you're in this congestion zone on the 12-minute, Jim. So it's going to come back to that ATR. We see that over and over and over again. I think what you would do is wait until this comes back to 39.53, Jim. Read the volume. And if you get diverging volume, that's going to be a good sign that this is going to pull right straight back down. Do you understand that? Because, you know, that's what typically happens when we see the congestion zones. See how this pulled back to the congestion dot, then it broke the ATR, okay? In this case, it's come down to the congestion dot. If it comes back to this ATR, and it does it on diverging volume, that's where you're going to see whether it's going to bounce off of this one or will it continue up. That's going to be the key to it. Hmm, you got it, Dave. You summed it up perfectly. And you know, um, I don't know how many of you have noticed this in the room but typically you will always have one one or two time frames that dictate the day's movement 
you know how sometimes I tell you, okay, today you need to be focused on the 45 and the 180, okay? Or today you need to be focused on the 720 and the 1440, okay? Today is one of those days on most of the markets. Uh, we need to be focused over on the uh, 720 and the 1440. Now, will you see signs of it, like on the 12 minute? Yeah, you will. You see signs over on the 180 because we're expecting that magenta peak to come in. Okay? As that last high was made, it was on diverging volume. Okay? But which time frame is really dictating the movement on the smaller time frames? In my opinion, it is the higher time frame. And one of the reasons that we did the congestion zone is you will find the congestion zone is totally awesome. Um, I was trying to think of which market I was looking at earlier. It might have been on the currencies. But man, it nailed it. You can see on the Aussie, it came down here, went, it missed it by 85, about 35 points. Came back down, now it's going back up. This is it's typical behavior when it's in that congestion zone. You see it right now in the three minute as well. But that was another one that just gave a great example of how the congestion zone works. Now, of course, I can't find it because I want it now. I don't know where it was now. It's one of the markets I was looking at earlier today, but you saw a perfect congestion zone outlined. Absolutely perfect. All right, any other questions this morning, guys? Because I actually want to get ready for trading this morning.